Hey everybody, it is Saturday afternoon and we're going to take a trip around the world here. So this is my 29 miscellaneous. We always start here and as usual there's not a lot going on, not a lot to talk about in this tank other than it needs a water change. You can see how low the water level is from the top line where I like it. I have not topped this tank off so that is just how low it's gotten since the last water change so it's not urgent but it does need to be done. Uh, more importantly, the filters need to be taken care of. This tank, for some reason, the filters get clogged really, really quickly, and you can see how much water I've got flowing through the center already. That's what is bypassing the filters. Uh, you can see over here, the filters are still allowing some water to go through them, but it's got more backflow than it does through flow. So time to change the filter pads, probably even time to clean out my bio sponges in there. For some reason, this tank also has uh, mad, crazy bio sponges that get filled up and clogged up very quickly for some reason. Uh, on the upshot, it's always a good source if I ever need to spike a tank and get a new tank started or something. Uh, I've always got a couple of sponge pads in there I can really squeeze out and get a lot of really good uh, bacteria out of it. But other than that, nothing really going on. Just due for a water change. Looks like it's due for a glass cleaning too. Uh, I would wonder whether or not the... Um, can't think of what I'm, word I'm looking for here. I've got a clown pleco. There we go. I've got a clown pleco in the bottom of this tank somewhere. And while I don't see it at the moment, um, it is still in there. I'm sure it's still in there because we can see how clean the rocks are. We can see how clean that piece of woodwork on the right there is. And we can even see some fresh marks on top of that Anubius back there that have been scraped clean. So I'm sure that's from the Pleco. Not really sure why the glass is getting dirty like this. It normally keeps the glass scraped pretty clean too. And I don't have to worry too much about it. So anyway, that's a look at my 29. As I said, not a lot going on with it. Just a little bit of maintenance needed. My 55-gallon Garami tank. We do have some changes to talk about in this tank. Uh, if you haven't caught up recently, I did add some new fish to this tank. I added two large Siamese algae eaters, and almost immediately the uh, community got disrupted, and I started seeing a lot of agitation and fish swimming around and darting and dashing, and I wasn't really sure what was going on, whether it was the algae eaters themselves or... My snakeskin gourami seemed to always be involved in it, and eventually I deduced that it was the snakeskin gourami seemed to be the antagonist, and I caught it the other day. I actually got it out of the tank, and since then, you can see we don't have a lot of stressful activity going on in this tank. We don't have a whole lot of any kind of activity going on in this tank, but at least we don't have a lot of stressful activity going on in this tank. So I am still going to try to get the stock built back up in this tank. I think maybe now my original idea of having a bunch of snakeskin garamis in this tank might not be the best idea. Uh, the, I'm sorry, not snakeskin garami, chocolate garami. Uh, the chocolate garami are very docile, and they like a very calm neighborhood. So, not, you know, notwithstanding all of the current flow and all of that that they don't like, they also don't like boisterous fish and a lot of activity and jostling around. And I really suspect that's what killed the one I had in here when I put that snakeskin garami in here. I think even before those uh, Siamese algae eaters were in here, just the activity from that snakeskin garami wound up stressing out that little garami, the chocolate garami, so much that uh, we lost it. So, the... China, uh, the Siamese algae eaters in here are probably going to be too much for chocolate garamis. So what I'm considering doing is getting a group of moonlights. I've had moonlights before, but I've never had a group of moonlights. And I think maybe four, five, six moonlight garamis swimming around in this tank would look fantastic. So that's something I'm considering. Um, I'm really leaning away from going with any of the three spots or anything like that. Maybe we'll do some pearls, uh, or maybe more honey garami, something maybe. Um, I don't think we're going to do the chocolates, and I don't think we're going to go with any more of the larger, like the snakeskin or the kissing garamis or anything like that. So we'll see, but I did get that snakeskin garami out of this tank. We will see it later on in this video, but for now... Uh, that's all I've really got going on. I can say that if you'll notice, since I've put these Siamese algae eaters in the tank and finished my latest treatment with the ChemiClean, 
Look at how loose and broken up all of that stuff is on the surface of these leaves. And even on these leaves, you can see it's already gone. So I don't know if that's just been broken away and gone away because it's dead or it's been eaten away by the Siamese algae eaters that are now in the tank. But in theory, most of that crud you see and all that growth that you see all over those rocks and everything, there's not a lot living in that anymore other than algae. I treated it with the ChemiClean and that basically oxidizes all of that biofilm and all that grunge and crud. And it's not a bad way to just give your tank a little cleaning once in a while, provided you follow the directions. Do not use it without putting an air stone in your tank or you will lose fish. So I'm not going to get into talking about how to treat with ChemiClean at the moment, but I did treat with ChemiClean and you can see the results. The tank looks a lot better and hopefully those algae eaters in there are now going to keep me nice and clean in this tank. So moving on to my T-Bar tank. Uh, not too much going on in this tank. I have noticed now that we've gotten into the summer weather, we're sitting at 26 or 27 degrees. I have it set for 25. So I checked this morning with another one of my thermometers and the water is indeed almost 80 degrees in this tank. So that is not the temperature it's set for. That is telling me the current temperature in this tank is 27 degrees, which is roughly 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's an accurate thermometer, and the tank really is 80 degrees. And that's not because of the heater. That's just because it's warm. It's summertime down here in my basement. I've got all these other tanks going. And then the big culprit is right around the corner. I've got a dehumidifier going pretty much 24-7. And a dehumidifier basically works the same way as a room air conditioner works, except it blows hot air into the room as it's using the condensed moisture. You know, it's collecting the condensed moisture, and you get that hot air blown back into the room. It's nice and dry, but it's also really warm. And my basement is actually the warmest place in my house in the summertime. Most people, you know, tend to think of going down into the basement in the summertime to get away from all the heat. But my basement is actually warmer. I've got the central air upstairs, and then you come down here, and it's very, very warm. So, again, it's not really humid. It's just really warm. So that 27-degree temperature in this tank comes from basically ambient room temperature. It actually gets up to 80 degrees down here in the basement uh, with all this equipment and all these lights and, again, that dehumidifier running. So my actual heaters in my tanks don't often have to run uh, except right after water changes a lot of times. If I put some cooler water in there, they'll come on to get the tank back up to temperature. Uh, but once the tank is up to temperature, you know, the room itself keeps the tanks warm. Uh, to give you an idea of how filthy that algae eater is, that uh, I can't remember which algae eater I've got in this tank, uh, that pleco, I got a gold spot pleco, and you can see the piles of poop that build up in this tank. I mean, you can see it down on the bottom well enough. I got the fish poop everywhere down here. But I get piles of it like that in the plant. So it's really getting about time I got to do something about that one. He's getting really big and I'm really thinking I need to get him into a bigger tank or just get rid of him altogether. Uh, that little shadowy fish you can kind of see in there is my Cynodontus lucipinus. I actually bought that under the name Petricola, but over the years I have come to uh, realize it's definitely a lucipinus. If it was a Petricola, it would be much, much bigger than that by now. Uh, that more or less has not grown since the day I got it years ago. And so that would indicate that it is the lucipinus, among other things that indicate that it's a lucipinus. Anyway, not a lot going on in that tank, just having a look at it. My 40 breeder, formerly my Black Ghost Knifefish tank, looks absolutely fantastic. I cannot believe how good this tank looks now that I put those four smaller Siamese algae eaters in here. They have just destroyed the algae. This tank was overrun with the filamentous hair algae uh, or spirogyra. And I just, I cannot get over it. It's been a combination between the Siamese algae eaters and the rubber lip plecos that I have in this tank who don't eat the hair algae, but eat the other stuff. So once I got the 
Siamese algae eaters in here who devoured the hair algae. They basically exposed everything for the rubber lips to come along. And I mean, you can see how that woodwork is absolutely scraped clean. I couldn't do a better job than that if I got in there with a wire brush. All of the vegetation is now green again. You can actually see all of the surface of the leaves. I mean, it's just absolutely incredible what these fish have gotten in here and done. And the thing that I find most interesting is if you look at my java fern, that used to be a big, thick mass of fern. And it was all full of growth, um, not good growth, like um, that green, slimy um, cyanobacteria growth and the hair algae and those thick, dark mats of slimy green algae that grow in there. It was all over that. And it also had a bunch of dead stuff in there that I couldn't really get out without tearing the whole root mass apart and so on and so forth. And look at it now. I, some of the, the, the fronds have been skeletonized because they've gone through and they've devoured all of the dead material and left all of the green growing stuff alive. They've absolutely manicured this better than I possibly ever could of myself. And you can already see nice new green growth coming in to replace the dead stuff and there's light now getting to it there's water flow now moving through it i cannot express how overjoyed i am at the results i knew we were going to get some real good um algae removal and we were going to get a lot of algae re you know reduction in the tank after putting them in there i had no idea and they just never stop that's just what they do all day long they just nibble on algae so at this point, I am obviously feeding them algae wafers, uh, as well as the sinking shrimp pellets and regular old fish food, you know, flake food. They eat that too, but they just never stop all day long. They just devour dead vegetation, algae, cyanobacteria, you name it. These Siamese algae eaters eat it. Absolutely incredible algae eating fish. All the years I've been keeping fish, I only got some of them fairly recently and I just had no idea they were as effective as they were. Uh, prior to them, I always would have recommended something like a rubber lip pleco. But from now on, anybody ever asked me what a good algae eating fish uh, to get, it's going to be a true Siamese algae eater. They are amazing. Just cannot get over how good this tank looks thanks to them. So that's the only thing I've really got going on in here. I am thinking about what changes I can make. I want to add some fish, but I'm not sure what I want to add just yet. Um, I'm down to like two or three of the Raspora hats. I only have two of the dwarf neon rainbow fish. I could get more dwarf neon rainbows easily enough. They're available right now. I could go get them this afternoon if I wanted them, but I haven't had a lot of luck with the ones I've had in here. I got a school of seven and we're down to two in under a year. And that's, you know, that's not really good fish keeping. You should be able to keep some fish alive longer than that. So I'm not really sure what's going on with them or why they were dying off. They really should do fine in my water. Uh, even with my somewhat lax uh, husbandry skills, they would still do fine in there. They should do fine in there, but they're not for some reason. So I don't know if I want to add more of them um, or just something different altogether. So we'll see. I don't know. Moving on. My 125-gallon native tank just got a new addition to it the other day. Nothing really different going on in here. Looks like my Anubius is putting up a little flower spike right there. Uh, nothing really new going on in here except for the new addition. My uh, a white sucker fish, speaking of the devil, that white sucker fish right there uh, had jumped out of my tank, uh, my waterfall tank, and landed in the little shallow tank that is my, or was my, red claw crab tank. And I don't know how long it was in there, and I don't know... Uh, what kind of injuries it might have suffered from being in there, but when I tried to get it out, it was thrashing around and banging around, and it did suffer some injuries. You can still see sort of an injured spot on its tail and some marks on its side, but when I first put it in this tank after catching it, uh, I didn't want to put it back in the um, tank and it jumped out of. It was already getting too big, and I'd already tried once or twice to catch it to get it out of there. Uh, it really did need to get out of there, but I was not wanting to do it the way we wound up doing it. Uh, anyway, once I put it in here, it really didn't look like it was going to make it. It was swimming with like a crooked back, and it was swimming almost half on its side. I really thought it had seriously injured itself, like broken back injured itself. 
and I came and checked a few hours later and it was swimming around a little more normally but still kind of a little out of it and as the evening went on every time I came in and checked on it again it looked better and better and more and more normal and now you can see it's just acting as normal as can be it's just kind of hanging out with the whole crowd and sitting in the current waiting for food to come along it feeds you know when i throw the food in there it goes and does its thing and so i'm not worried about its health anymore i'm pretty sure it recovered from any stress or shock or injuries that uh it might have gotten while it was going through that ordeal but now i'm to the point where i just i'm really ready to make some changes to this tank i did that recently by throwing a bunch of sunfish in there kind of on the spur of the moment uh, I immediately wished I'd hadn't because as soon as I put them in there, I realized that the tank is now way overstocked. I mean, it was overstocked before, but it's ridiculously overstocked now. And it's just, it's no more exciting. It still just seems kind of as boring to me. There's a few different fish to look at. You know, you can see some of these sunfish swimming around, but I don't know. It's just, I'm, I'm just getting kind of tired of this tank the way it is. I'm really feeling it's time for some change. So as always, if you're, you know, if you got any input or whatever, I'll always listen to anything uh, anybody has to say. In all likelihood, I'll do whatever I'm feeling like doing anyway. But you know, I always get ideas from people, and people, you know, might think, you know, send me thinking down a different direction that I'd never really uh, considered doing something with this tank or whatever. So all your comments are always welcome. Uh, I always like to hear other people's points of view. So moving on. Uh, my snail tank, not really sure what's going on with my snail tank, why the water's cloudy. Uh, I've never really seen it with cloudy water in it before, and it's got nothing to do with like how dirty and filthy it is. I'd go a year without doing a water change on this thing, and I've never had cloudy water in it before. So why it's cloudy now, I'm not entirely sure. So I don't know. I'm not really worried about it either. It's just shrimp. I mean, it's just uh, snails for my uh, other fish to eat. And as you can see by looking around here in my 40-gallon gudgeon tank, I've got no shortage of snails in plenty of my other tanks either, so I can always pick up snails when I need them uh, and do something with them. Now, in this tank, I'm actually starting to look around. If you'll notice sort of that grayish-green material all over the place, that, I believe, is just broken up and dissolved algae wafers that have never gotten eaten, so I probably need to cut back a little bit on how much I'm feeding this tank. The only fish that are in this tank are my purple-spotted gudgeon, which I don't actually see at the moment. Uh, I'm sure it's hiding in there somewhere. Let me, there it is, it's in the back corner. So that's my purple spotted gudgeon. And then down in this cave, generally, I have a rubber lip pleco, which is right there. You can see its silhouette. And my little South American bumblebee catfish actually lives in this cave right here. So we don't get to see that one very often, but it does make the rare appearance, even if it's only like a fin sticking out or its face shining out of the darkness. Uh, I do know that it's alive. I do see it moving around in there. I have seen it dart out and grab food. So reclusive as it may be, it is still in there and it is still alive. So not a lot going on with this tank. I just pulled a bunch of plants out of it, got it nice and opened up so we can see in there again. And everything is looking good, looking pretty. Uh, we're getting some decent growth on my non-water sprite and non-temple plant type plants. I know it's kind of hard to see, but I've got a plant back there that I'm not entirely sure what it is. But that was given to me by one of my viewers, and it's taken off and it's doing pretty well, so I'm happy with that. It almost looks like it might be an acris or something. I'm not sure what that is. And then these little plants here are also plants from one of my viewers. The same viewer gave me a bunch of plants, and so they're actually doing pretty well in there. So I'm happy about that too. Moving on, my 125-gallon African-themed tank. Let me get over here where I can get into position to look at it. Well, there's a good look at my rainbow shark. This is a fairly recent addition to this tank. I took this out of my office tank, I don't know, a couple of months ago, and I put it in here, and it has just taken to this tank like a duck to water. Um, absolutely beautiful fish in this tank it fits with the theme it fits with the overall color scheme its behavior is cool I'm just really happy with that fish here in this tank and then of course you can see my Cynodontis and then I got my Tenopoma over here hiding in the weeds but right there in the back if you just got a glimpse of that is my snakeskin gourami so this is where the snakeskin gourami that was in my gourami tank got moved to 
Ah, I was looking for that. I knew I was going to have a dead Congo Tetra in here any day now, and we can now see it stuck to the power head. I noticed last night that one of the Congo Tetras that had been looking kind of rough um, was starting to get really bloated, almost that pine cone look to it, and I knew it was just a matter of time before we lost it. Now, I'm not going to be too concerned about that. I'm not going to scratch my head as to why, just as fish age, just like anything else when it ages, body functions start breaking down, kidneys don't work right anymore, you know, organs don't process things the way they used to, and you just start seeing signs of problems with older fish. And all of my Congo Tetras are now years old and well beyond what their normal life expectancy would be. And so I'm now down to my final uh, Congo Tetra from my original batch when I set this tank up years ago, or I set this community up, I should say. They actually got started in a 40-gallon tank, um, which is my former Black Ghost Nightfish tank, is what they, these fish all started in years ago. And when they outgrew it, they came over into this tank. And so now I'm down to my last original Congo uh, these rainbow fish are actually newer additions since being in this tank, but my Tenopoma and my Synodontis are the last of the original crew, uh, with the exception of that one remaining Congo Tetra. And then, as of last night, we had two Congo Tetras, but as I said, we're finally down to the one. So no great loss. I was expecting it. Um, it's from old age. It's not from anything else. I've had those Tetras in this tank, or again, I've had those Tetras for six years now maybe seven years something like that it's been a while uh, that I've had them so I'm not too worried about that so the only other change in this tank other than the loss of the Congo is the addition of the snakeskin and so far I've seen no indication that that's going to cause any issues or any problems uh, everybody seems to be getting along just fine and I used to have a snakeskin garami in this tank um, as part of the original uh, fish that were in here from way back and I lost that one some time ago So I already know that these fish get along just fine uh, with the snakeskin garami and if you're wondering yes the tenopoma is related to garamis and while sometimes putting two different garami species uh, they are also related to the uh, Like the Siamese fighting fish, you know, you might want to question whether or not to put more of these in one tank Again, I've never had an issue with the snakeskin garami and the tenopoma uh, being in the same tank together, so I'm not concerned about it being an issue this time either. So, moving on to my 20-gallon angelfish tank. This tank really needs a cleaning. The glass needs to be wiped down something fierce. It just looks gray and grungy. Uh, the tank itself could probably use a good cleaning with the ChemiClean treatment. It, all of that grunge and all that growth, that's exactly the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Um, with the ChemiClean, if you run a treatment through there, all of that stuff will just get killed off and die, and the tank will just look so much better. So the only thing I've got going on in this tank that's new is the addition of a school of Diamond Tetras. I've wanted Diamond Tetras ever since I saw them years and years ago. They're just amazing looking Tetras. They've got basically the shape of a skirt Tetra. Body-wise, their fins are a little bit different. They've got almost like a shark-like dorsal fin and sort of sharp angular um, anal fins. But it's their glittery, sparkly, twinkly scales all over them that this dirty tank, that poor lighting quality, and this camera are simply not doing justice to. They really do sparkle like diamonds. Uh, if you ever look at a diamond and you see the fire, all the different colors and the glints of glue, and blue and red and yellow, and you know you see that in these fish. You actually see all. It's like it's literally like the fire that you see in a diamond, sparkling off these fish. They're incredible looking. So one of the things I'm considering doing now is, in addition to bolstering up the school, I only got five of them, and they're not really schooling tightly. They just kind of drift around the tank. They hide in different corners and places, and sometimes they'll get together, and sometimes they're not. So we're not really seeing the kind of schooling behavior I'd like to see, first of all. Well, that little barb in this tank is really obnoxious. He harasses pretty much everybody except that angelfish, and he probably still harasses the angelfish. Uh, considering how much filaments we have on the tail, again, I know this tank is really dirty and hard to see, but if you look at the tail fin on this angelfish, or the uh, anal fin, I should say, not the tail fin, you will see 
long flowing filaments coming off of it and if there was any fin nipping at all going on in this tank it would definitely not have all of those filaments on there so i'm not worried about this fish being stressed at all but it seems like everybody else in the tank gets chased around by that cherry barb including the other cherry barbs so not sure what i want to do about that either but with these diamond tetras I'm actually, I almost feel like this tank is a waste to put these fish in it. I want to put them in my waterfall tank where I've got that really, really good light because I can't imagine the colors we would see sparkling off of these fish if they were underneath of a light that had a full spectrum on it. Uh, this is a low budget LED, so it's got a very limited spectrum. And with the limited spectrum, you only get limited light reflection. So these fish under a full spectrum light would be just absolutely incredible. And all of the lighting I have on my waterfall tank is full spectrum. So I might just get more and have some in this tank and have some in my waterfall tank. There's nothing that says I can't have diamond tetras in more than one tank. So moving on, more new fish that only my Patreon patrons know about. I've got Australian rainbow fish. I went out to the good pet store out in Frederick last weekend and actually left empty handed. I didn't see anything at all that caught my fancy. And on the way home, I have to drive right past the pet co and I stopped in and they had these rainbow fish for $2.99. And I thought, you know what? These will go good in my 40 breeder formerly my black ghost knife fish tank so while we were over there talking about what i might be adding to this tank or whatever i just simply didn't want to give away the surprise that i've already got seven rainbow fish that are going to be going in that tank and i'm just letting them sit here in quarantine for a little while a little petco in my opinion doesn't always have the best healthiest quality fish so whenever i get stuff from petco uh, i'm much more likely to quarantine it and i'm much more likely to leave it in quarantine for quite a while they do give a 30-day guarantee so if they die within a month of buying them i can take them back and either exchange them or get my money back so no sweat there and at 2.99 a piece that's a deal on rainbow fish. You know, the other rainbow fish I was looking at were 20 or $30 a piece. So these will go in my 40 breeder. There'll be a nice little splash of color, but they will not be the really nice fancy rainbow fish that I ultimately plan on buying to go in this tank to either join with or replace my rainbow fish that are already in there. So let's look forward to that real soon too. So then my final tank that we're going to look at on this tour since we're already almost half an hour into it we'll save the waterfall tank for another one this is my brackish tank this houses my figure eight puffer butterbean and it also houses bumblebee gobies and very recently i only had a couple of bumblebee gobies in here uh, either two or three i'd sort of lost count you never really see them all at the same time so you're never really sure how many you've gotten there but they were the smallest bumblebee gobies I've ever seen in my life. And I will clarify by saying the term bumblebee goby covers any of the brachygobius species of fish. They're all slightly different species, but there's a million little species of gobies out there that are really tiny and they're black and yellow and they have sort of stripes on them. And all of those different brachygobius species get lumped into the term bumblebee goby. So I don't know what species these actually are, but I wound up buying five more bumblebee gobies when I was down at House of Tropicals the other day. And these are the biggest bumblebee gobies I've ever seen. These things are absolutely enormous by bumblebee goby standards. Even the guy at the fish store, when I pointed him out, he, he said, have you ever seen bumblebee gobies so big? And to, to somebody that's not familiar with bumblebee gobies, you might think he, you know, he was being sarcastic and, and kidding because, you know, these are pretty small fish. But by bumblebee goby standards, these things are behemoth. Those are huge bumblebee gobies. So those, that's the last of my new fish. I had planned on going around and doing just a new fish video, but this one pretty much covered it. I probably will still do that uh, because this took half an hour to get to, and I don't think a lot of people are going to sit through an entire half an hour just to see what new fish I got. But you can see the little bumblebee goby swimming around in there. Really cool fish. I've always enjoyed them. They, too, are a Uri Haleen species, so they do well in brackish water. Uh, I will say I've also added some water sprite 
to this tank. I want to see how well the water sprite does in brackish water. And currently, we're not even in brackish water, actually. Uh, I tested it last night. I did another water change, and I used my... Um, can't even think of what the device is called now, but I measured the specific gravity, and we're actually at 1.002 at this point, and very, very low-end, bottom-of-the-range brackish is 1.004 by some people's opinion, and 1.005 by others. I always tend to think of 1.005 uh, as being the baseline for brackish. Anything lower than that and you've got plenty of dissolved mineral salts in the water, but it still doesn't qualify as brackish if you don't at least hit a specific gravity of 1.004. And we are at 1.002. So the reason I've lowered the specific gravity is I want to see if I can get on top of the cyanobacteria growth in this tank. I wanted to see if it had any impact on... Um, Butterbean here, who has had some strange white markings, almost like lesions on his skin. And it is seeming to have a positive impact on both. Butterbean, while you can still see some of those white marks on him, looks a lot better. It really is clearing up. And being a urihaline animal, or a, we'll just call it a brackish animal, in nature, they actually swim around from saltier water to less salty water, and they seldom are in constantly stable water. You know, the specific gravity that this fish would be in out in nature would not be the same on a day-to-day -day basis, like I just keep it in this tank. So for years, this fish sat in the exact same specific gravity, day after day after day for years. And so now I'm trying to drop the specific gravity a little bit. I might start mixing it up. I can take it back up a little bit from time to time. And that, I think, will keep the fish as healthy as possible. All of the fish in this tank will do well under those circumstances. The only question will be, how will the plants fare under changing water conditions? So that's something we're going to be keeping an eye on moving forward. And I am, again, trying the water sprite. Water sprite should do okay in brackish. So in this extremely low-end brackish, we'll call it, um, I think the water sprite will be fine, and so I will be able to have some brackish um, acclimated water sprite. I do sell my water sprite, and this way I'll have some that's already acclimated to brackish water. If anybody's interested in that, uh, I would be able to do something about that too. So again, check my email uh, in the description down below if you're interested in purchasing any uh, aquatic plants or anything or just contacting me with questions or anything my email will be down below so i'm going to say that's it we're all the way back here to where we started again this was a long one so we'll save the waterfall tank for its own uh, video in the very near future so look forward to that make sure you subscribe that way you won't miss it or anything else and then don't forget of course we always start here at my 29 miscellaneous so thanks for watching hope you enjoyed and i'll see you real soon in the next one